In this video, we're going to use calculus to calculate the volume of general solids. So if you think about it, if I'm trying to calculate the volume of a general solid, like maybe a potato or a cucumber, how would you go about it? Well, if you're a mathematician, one way you might do it is to cut it up into slices, which all have the same width. Let's call that delta x. And then, if we could estimate the cross-sectional area of each slice, like maybe this cucumber, we might say, you know, this slice kind of looks like a circle. So we'll calculate its cross-sectional area as if it were a circle. And since I'm going to have n slices, I'll put an index on each slice. So this is the ith slice. And so its area, a sub i, would be about pi times r sub i squared. And then I'd need to find the r sub i for each slice. And uh, the volume then would be just take the area, the cross-sectional area, multiply it times the width, get an r sub i for each slice. That would give me an a sub i for each slice. And then I get the volume of each slice, add up the volume of each slice, and that would be a good approximation for the volume. Now, better yet, if I could come up with a formula which describes the cross-sectional area as a function of x, then I could mathematically say, let me take more and more slices. In fact, in the limit, as the number of slices goes to infinity, that would turn into an integral, a definite integral, which I could hopefully evaluate if I could find the antiderivative of that particular uh, integrand. So let's look at uh, a simpler example um, than a cucumber. Here we have a solid. Its base is the region in the xy plane enclosed by the curves y equals x squared and y equals 4. So this shaded area right here is the base of the solid. And if I were to slice this, perpendicular to the y-axis. So looking at the picture straight up and down on my slices, or coming out of the, the, the screen are my slices, and um, they are parallel to the x-axis, perpendicular to the y-axis. So a slice going like that and then coming out of the screen. Uh, those slices are actually going to be squares, and I'd like to calculate the volume of the solid that's described that way. Well, it is a little bit difficult to envision what that solid looks like, and so I went ahead and made a crude uh, model of what this uh, solid looks like. So its base is on that uh, portion of the parabola, and each cross section is a square. So here it is looking up the y axis, and you can see that uh, even in my crude model, I did a pretty good job of making the cross sections look like squares. And there's another view of it. And so let's take a, a, a look at this. And let's remember what we're doing here. We're, we're slicing up this solid. Uh, and we're going to make the slices in such a way that it's, it's easy to figure out what the cross-sectional area. Well, since the slices or the cross-sections perpendicular to the y-axis are squares, that's easy. We're going to slice things perpendicular to the y-axis. and What's important here is that we see that the thickness of the slice is delta y. That is very important. It's really the first thing we have to understand 
is the thickness is delta y. And what that tells me is that one, I'm going to have a dy integral. My differential will be dy. So the integrand must be in terms of y. And finally, the bounds must be y values. Uh, so this is not always going to be uh, a delta y question. It, it, you really have to look at the description of the problem. But in this problem, uh, the thickness of each slice will be delta y, and so the rest of the work that I need to do, which is finding the integrand and finding the bounds, those must be y values as well, or in terms of y. So formally what I'm doing is I'm taking my distance from 0 to 4 along the y-axis. I'm breaking it up into subintervals, just like we did with the area problem. I'm labeling the, uh, the values along those subintervals y sub 0, y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3. In general, I'd have a y sub i minus 1 to y sub i, y sub i plus 1. And I didn't put the rest of the tick marks, but it would go all the way up to y sub n. Now, I need to be able to find the width of the base of my square. So this right here, I'm looking at the top view. I have a cross section which is a square, and I need to know the, the length of that square. Its base is over here, and I need to write that in terms of y. Well, I have a y equals x squared parabola, and I can solve that for x. So this branch on the uh, left is radical y, x equals radical y. I'm sorry, that's on the right. And on the left, I have x equals negative radical y. Now, what I'm interested in, though, is the length of this base. And I know that half of the length is going to be radical y sub i. And so twice that, well, I'd have a radical y, another radical y. So the thickness is delta y. The length is going to be 2 radical y. And so the height is a square, so both the length and the width here are going to be 2 radical y well, sub i. And so to estimate the volume, if I have n of those slices, I would take 2 radical y sub i times itself times delta y. That's the volume of one slice, add up all n slices. And so that's my area. Remember, if we could just find that area formula, then we could let the number of slices go to infinity. And notice that if I multiply this out, 2 times 2 gives me 4. Radical yi times radical yi is just y sub i. I'll get a definite integral. And my bounds of integration go from 0 to 4. Four, they have to be y values. Integrand is 4y, good. dy, everything is in terms of y. So now I just find the antiderivative using the power rule and evaluate it from 0 to 4. And that gives me the answer of 32 cubic units. It's volume now, so that would be 32 cubic units. All right, let's look at a different example. In this case, the base of our solid is a region enclosed by y equals sine of x and y equals negative sine of x between 0 and pi. And the other thing that's different is the cross sections 
are perpendicular to the x-axis and they are equilateral triangles. We like to calculate the volume of the solid. So our general idea is we're going to take slices that whose, whose thickness is going to be constant and the face of that slice is going to be an equilateral triangle. And so we need to remember how to calculate the area of an equilateral triangle. So if I have an equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same. The angles are 60 degrees. If I split that in half with an altitude, then each half is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And remember, that's one of our special triangles. And the ratio of the lengths of the sides is one to radical three. And so uh, in our, we, I would need to multiply each of these sides by L over two in order to get the sides in my equilateral triangle here, which means that the uh, altitude, the height of this triangle is root three times L over two or root three over two times L. And so since the area of a triangle is half base times height, my base is L, my height is root three over two L, then the area formula is root three over four times L squared. All right, so this is our base, the two curves between uh, y equals sine of x and y equals negative sine of x, x goes from zero to pi. So um, I noticed that we have some symmetry. The, the line x equals pi over two is a line of symmetry here. And so when I made a model for this, I just stopped at pi over two uh, since the other, it's symmetrical. It's just the mirror image is the other half. And so uh, if I look down the x-axis here, uh, I can see that the uh, cross-sectional areas are going to be equal lateral triangles. Now, we're cutting perpendicular to the x-axis, so that means the thickness of each slice is going to be delta x. So remember, that tells me that I have to write everything in terms of my x. Bound. Bounds have to be in terms of x. The integrand has to be in terms of x. And of course, it'll be a dx integral. Well, again, what would be my strategy? I would break up my interval on the x-axis from 0 to pi into n sub-intervals. That's the equivalent of slicing this solid up into n slices. Each one will have a thickness of delta x. And then I need to find a formula for the length of the base of each of those equilateral triangles. Well, again, I'm only interested in the length. So whether I start from the x-axis and go up to the uh, top curve or from the x-axis and go down to the bottom curve, the length that I travel is sine of x sub i. And so down here in this equilateral triangle of my slice, the face, its length is 2 sine of x sub i. The length of the base or the length of each side is 2 sine of x sub i. And so then I can calculate the area. The area is going to be just root 3 over 4 times L squared, but I'm replacing L with 2 sine of x sub i. So then I have to square that. And simplifying, that would just be radical 3 times sine squared of x sub i. And so I multiply that times delta x to get the volume of that slice, add up the volume of all of the slices, all n slices. That'll give me an approximation 
But of course, I want the exact value, which I can get by taking the limit as n goes to infinity. That'll give me the definite integral from 0 to pi of radical 3 sine squared of x dx. So now uh, let's take a moment here uh, to talk about how to find the antiderivative of this. In a way, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. This is something that you study in detail in calculus two, but it's not very difficult. So we'll go over it here in this video. So I'm calculating the integral from zero to pi radical three sine squared of x dx. So I don't really know an antiderivative for sine squared, but it's easy to find if I remember the double angle formula for cosine. Cosine of two theta, there's three ways you can write this, but the way that we wanna use it is cosine of two theta is one minus two sine squared theta. And I can solve that for sine squared theta. That will give me one half in brackets, one minus cosine of two theta. And so I'm just going to replace sine squared of x with one half in brackets, one minus cosine of two x in my integrand. So I'm not making a u substitution or change of variables here. All I'm doing is using an identity. Now, in order to evaluate this integral, though, I will need to make a u substitution because I can see that my input to cosine is 2x. So I'll go ahead and let uh, u equal 2x, and then du will be 2dx, which means dx is half of du. I'm going to go ahead and convert my bounds of integration. So the lower bound, when x equals 0, u will also be 0. And when x equals pi, then u will be 2 pi. So if I rewrite my integral, I'm going to factor out the root 3 over 2. And then I need to multiply that by a half because dx equals half of du. So I get root 3 over 4. And then uh, instead of 2x, I still I have u. So it's 1 minus cosine of u du. I can find that antiderivative. So I'll still keep the root 3 over 4 outside the brackets. The antiderivative of 1 is u. The antiderivative of cosine u is sine u. And I need to evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi. So I'll first substitute 2 pi for u. So I'll have 2 pi minus sine of 2 pi. That sine of 2 pi is 0. Then subtract off, I'll replace u with 0. I'll have 0 minus sine of 0, but sine of 0 is still 0. So that just works out to root 3 over 2 times pi. Now in our last example, the base is the solid region, uh, the base of the solid is the region enclosed by y equals 4 minus x squared in the x-axis. So the shaded region that we have in this graph over here. And what's different is that uh, the, uh, the cross sections uh, perpendicular to the, uh, and I have a mistake here, this is not correct, it's not x-axis, it is uh, perpendicular to the y-axis. So let me fix that, and I'll have to fix it on the subsequent pages as well. Perpendicular to the y-axis are semicircles centered on the y-axis. So I didn't make a model of this, but um, it wasn't really that hard to draw. And so here's the kind of a 3D view of it. And I just drew one slice. And uh, I've made my correction that it is going to be the slice which is 
perpendicular to the y-axis. And that is going to tell me that my thickness is delta y. And so that means I have to find the formula for the area of the cross section of this slice in terms of y. So over here, I've got essentially the top view of that slice. Its thickness again is delta y. And so uh, I can solve the equation y equals 4 minus x squared. On this side, I'll get x equals positive radical 4 minus y. And that should be enough for me to, to figure out what I need to know. So that would tell me that this half of this base here of my slice is radical 4 minus y sub i, which is important because well, the other side is going to be also radical 4 minus y sub i. But that means that the radius of this semicircle is radical 4 minus y sub i. And I'll call that r sub i. Now that's half of a circle. And so the area of half that circle would be half pi r sub i squared. And then I just multiply that times delta y to get the volume of that slice. Then add up all n slices. And the volume of all n slices gives me an estimate for the volume of the solid. And then um, I can replace by r sub i squared. r sub i squared now is just going to be 4 minus y sub i. And then if I let the number of slices go to infinity, I get the definite integral. My bounds go from 0 to 4. They have to be y bounds because this is a dy integral. And then I still have the pi over 2 in parentheses 4 minus y. So calculate that antiderivative. I'll factor out the pi over 2. The antiderivative of 4 is just 4y. The antiderivative of y is y squared over 2. And I have to evaluate that between 0 and 4. So first replace y with 4, the upper bound. I have the pi over 2 still outside the brackets. So that'll give me 16 minus 16 over 2. That'll be 8. Uh, I still have to subtract off the evaluation with the bottom or the lower bound, but that's just 0. So we said that was going to be 16 minus 8, which will give me 8. And so that should work out to 4 pi. Well, we're going to look at uh, special uh, solids next. They're going to be called solids of revolution, but the idea is still going to be the same. We're going to calculate the volume of a slice, try to find a formula for the area of the cross section of the slice, uh, and then uh, add up the volume of the, all the slices, take the limit, that'll give me a definite integral, and we'll be able to calculate the volume that way.